Hi friends, I'm Sherry Rita from Wilmette Public Library. And I'm here with a story today that asks the question, how much is enough? It's a question that Leo Tolstoy asked in his story called, How Much Land Does a Man Need? And this story is based on that. It goes like this. Once there was a landowner who decided to sell her land. And there was a group of peasants who pitched in together and bought it. They all agreed it would be much, much better if they were in charge of their own farming. And it was better. Instead of worrying about the weather and weeds and roaming pests and all the rent that they had to pay for their land and the fines they had to pay for trespassing when one of their animals got loose, they only had to worry about the weather and the weeds and the roaming pests and taxes. But still, life was a little easier and everyone was a little happier, except for one man named Pahom. Now, Pahom was pretty much like every other farmer. He weeded and he watered his crops and fed his animals. And once in a while, he chased after a trampling, tramping beast that got away into a neighbor's land. But when he was a landless peasant, he used to get so mad when the landowner fined him for escapes. What does she think, he used to fume, that I like running after the beasts? Once he had land of his own, he began to see things a little differently. When a neighbor's horse or cow came trampling or tromping through his land, it drove him crazy. How dare you, he'd shout. I need that pasture for my own cows, you know. He'd jump and fume and yell at his neighbors while they ran around trying to recapture their beasts. Pretty soon he started finding them. He started, started trying to cheat them at the marketplace. And pretty soon everyone avoided him. He had no friends. And tantrum after tantrum was making Pahom kind of tired. So he got a loan and he bought an extra plot of land away from the neighbors and their tromping, trampling beasts. And he was happy because he had more land. Until harvest time came. And then he had to hire a cart to get his wheat all the way to market. He complained to the buyers there and one of them told him about some land for sale way out in Bashkir country. It's all together, one big piece, the man told him. Butter them up, bring them gifts. If they like you, I'm sure they'll sell it to you cheap. More land in one big piece. Pahom's eyes lit up. And the very next day, he set out for Bashkir country, his cart loaded with gifts, rugs and mirrors and clocks and I don't know, maybe an Xbox. The Bashkirs loved the gifts. And the spokesman told Pahom they'd, tell, they'd sell him the land for a thousand rubles, like a thousand bucks. Pahom was skeptical. <laughs> How much land, he asked. As much as you can walk around in one day, the spokesperson said. What's the catch, asked Pahom. There must be a catch. There must, said a woman laughing. Okay, here it is. You can have all the land you can walk around in a single day, sunrise to sunset. A home's eyes lit up with greed. I can walk about 35 miles in a day, he thought. That's 22,400 acres. That's, that's like the whole width of the state of Delaware. Start from here, the woman said. If you don't make it back, we'll keep your money and the land remains with us. Pahom was delighted. He reached out his hand to shake on the deal quickly before the Bashkirs changed their mind. Then he went to a guest hut where he was meant to sleep, but he stayed awake all night plotting a path that was exactly 35 miles around. He set out at sunrise, walking a quick but steady pace so he wouldn't wear out. He walked and walked, thinking, all oh, this will be mine. But you know, Pahom couldn't stick to his path. Just after his breakfast, his walking breakfast, because he didn't want to miss one inch of land, 
Just after breakfast, he noticed a lovely little patch of forest to his right. Oh, I need to include a bit of forest land, he thought. I'll be able to hunt and gather truffles, and it makes a great boundary. So Pahom walked a little farther to include the forest in his circuit. Then, mid-morning, he found a meadow just a bit to the right. Oh, he thought. This meadow would be perfect for growing hay. If I grew my own hay, I wouldn't need to buy it from someone else. So, Pahom did what? He expanded his route. He walked a bit more to the right and included the meadow in his route. At lunchtime, he found himself right next to a paddock, all fenced and secure, where horses pranced and cantered. Horses, he thought. I could use more horses. And Pahom widened his route again to include the paddock and the pasture land beyond. I bet you see, can see where this is going, right? But Pahom couldn't. Or if he did, he couldn't stop himself. He went on that way all afternoon. He widened his route to include a wetland, a small lake with some of the fattest geese and a hill that would be perfect for sledding or maybe a manor house someday. He got tired, so he got slower. And eventually he saw the sun begin to sink, but still he couldn't resist one more detour to include a parking lot. As Baham walked, <laughs> limped really around the parking lot, he saw the sun turn orange in the sky. Oh no, he exclaimed, I better run. And he did, he ran and he ran and he ran and he ran, coughing and stumbling back toward the starting point, past that rise in the land where he wanted to build the manor house, past pastures and lakes, wetlands and meadows, past the forest from which he could almost see his starting point. Only the dimmest light was available to him now. The sun, had sunk below the horizon, but its orange and red and purple lights were in the sky. Surely that counts as daylight, he gasped, and he ran as fast as he could push himself and as hard as he could push himself and actually harder than he could push himself. His brain was shouting, more, more, but his heart cried out, enough, and it stopped. The home stopped. You can't go far without a heartbeat. And then he fell flat onto his face, his arms and legs spread out as if to grab and hold on to all that land. When nighttime came, the boxers set out and undertook a search for Pahom. They found him there, spread eagle on the dirt, and they buried him where he lay on a tiny plot of land that he didn't own. Then they took his money and they gave it to the poor, just like they always did. How much then is enough? Something to think about as you move toward gift giving and gift taking and gift enjoying and always wishing for one more thing. How much is enough?